So we're trying to show homes on this map on the home page. But to do that, we need to query the homes that are sort of visible on the map right now. So as you move the map around and zoom in and zoom out, the bounding box of the map, and a bounding box, it's basically two coordinates. I think it's the top right and the bottom left, so that we can say, find me all the homes within these two coordinates or within the bounding box. But to do that, we need to go ask the map, hey, what is your bounding box? So that's what we're working on in this video. And we're gonna look at a use debounce hook, which we'll get into a little bit later. So I'm actually gonna pop open the inspect because we're gonna be spending some time looking at the console here to see sort of what's happening with the bounding, um, the bounding box. So we're gonna go into the, uh, the home page. So we're gonna go into pages index, and this is where we are going to declare um, the state that's used. So what I want to do, I'm going to import the use local state hook. This is the same one that I used, uh, that we created in the past video, that will write the state and synchronize it with local storage. And we're just gonna come here to the top of home, and we're going to be um, creating the state. So to do that, we're going to say const, and we're gonna call it data bounds, and we're set data bounds is equal to use local state. And um, we need to give it a key. So this will be a key of string. Sorry, not <laughs> the type of data we have to pass is a, is a key and that's a string, but we're not gonna call it string, we're gonna call it bounds. And what's our initial value? So I'm gonna pass this also as a string. And you may be wondering why are you storing like bounds as a string, but I'll explain that a little bit later as we get into the debounce functionality. So what it looks like, it's an array where it's got another array and another array inside of it. So each of these subarrays is a tuple, so, so a fixed number of values, with this case two. And we're actually just gonna start it at zero, zero, go over to the other array, zero, zero. So I'm not really sure where 0000 is on the earth, but that's okay, because as soon as the map initializes, we're gonna override this value with something else. And if we wanna just pass in the type hint to our use local state, we can pass this in here that it's a string. Okay, so we're gonna pop up here, and we're actually just going to declare a type that represents these data bounds here. We're not gonna use this really in this video, but it will be available in the next one when we actually query using these data bounds. So we're gonna say type um, bounds array, and this is same thing. So it's an array with an array inside that has a number and a number, next one, number and a number, number and a number, like that. Okay, so, these are, this is our state here. We can console.log this out so we can start to see what value it has. So it should obviously be zero, zero right now. And we need to, to set it. We need to have it change and we need the map to tell us where it's positioned to be able to do that. So we're going to pass this setter function, set data bounds into the map. Set data bounds is equal to set data bounds. It's not gonna like this because it's not set up to receive this prop yet. So we're gonna open up the map and we need to update its interface to say that, hey, you're gonna receive a function called set data bounds. It's going to be a function that receives um, some bounds, which are a string, and it's going to not return anything. So that's its type. Now we can come here and we can say set data bounds is received. So when are we actually gonna call this function? So we're gonna call it in two places, but let's start with the first one, which is whenever the map loads, hey map, just tell me where your bounds are right now. So for that, we've got the onload prop, which is going to call an arrow function. And do you remember previously from many, many videos ago, we created a ref that will sort of remember um, the, a reference to the actual map, the React Map GL component. 
we can not just use it directly because if you look at it, it says that it's either going to be a React map or null. So for TypeScript to be happy, we just have to add an if statement. So if map ref dot current, so if it's been set, now you can go and access the current, which represents the map itself. So we want to ask the map for its bounds. So we can say const bounds is equal to map ref dot current. And then current represents the component, this react map GL, but underneath there's like an, the actual map box map that isn't react. I don't, it must just be JavaScript. So we need to ask the component for the actual map, the map box map itself. And that map we can ask for its bounds like this. So if we were to just console log this out, we'll put it like this so we can see what it looks like. Let's just refresh so that the on load should get called. There we go. So bounds is this FL that has underscore NE and then long and lat, but it's a little bit like the format's a little bit weird, right? It's not just, just a simple data structure. It's got like functions and, and different values. So we want to convert this into a format that works better for us. So to do that, we can say bounds to array. And if we want to just console.log this again, sorry, I deleted it. We can take a look at what this looks like now. So when we tell the bounds to convert itself to an array, it now looks like this, where you have an array of two arrays where each array contains a, a latitude and a longitude. I forget which is which. One of those is latitude, one of those is longitude. But now this very much resembles the type that we were declaring over here on the page, where we have an array of two arrays of two tuples that each contain two numbers. So let's get rid of the console.log what do I want to do with these bounds? I want to call the set data bounds setter so that we can pass in. See, it's not happy though. And that's because a type of number like this is not assignable to a string. Because remember, we're storing our bounds as a string like this. So to fix that, we just need to json.stringify this array. So convert that array of arrays into a string so that it's set here. Cool. So now it's being set on load. So when it starts at zero, zero, our initial value, and instantly it gets overwritten to the bounding box of where the map actually is. But the problem is, as I move this map around and zoom in and out, the bounding box should be changing because the position of the maps changing, but we only did it on load. So we're going to add one additional um, prop called on interaction state change that's going to be called and it gives us something called extra, which is sort of funny, but um, some extra info. So extra contains a couple things and it's going to tell us whether the map is currently being dragged or not. So if it's being dragged presently versus when the user stops dragging. Because if the user's like dragging the map, we don't really want to be executing queries like as they're in the process of moving the map. We sort of want to wait till when it's done. So what we can do is we can say if extra um, is dragging. So if, if they're not dragging and we just need to double check that we have the map ref current so that TypeScript is happy, if this happens, we can basically do this exact same thing where we ask to get the, get the map, the bounds, we convert those bounds to an array, we stringify them and we pass that to the set bounds um, state function setter. So we're gonna literally copy this exact thing and paste it in like this. Okay, so with that in place, if I come back here, See, I zoom in, I zoom out, I drag it. It's not updating until I stop, then it updates. But see how intense it is when it's zooming? It's changing like hundreds and hundreds of times. Could you imagine querying to the back end 
every time that number is changing. There'd be like hundreds of HTTP requests, the backend would be freaking out, and you'd be causing a lot of stress on the server and the database for nothing. You don't need to query the database that quickly. So that's why we're gonna come back into this index page and we're gonna use something called uh, use debounce hook. So we're gonna uncomment this. So debouncing, what that means, it, it, it's, its goal is to avoid sort of calling a function way too often. It sort of bounces them away for a certain number of time and then it calls it one time at the end. And you can de decide what that interval should be. Is it wait 200 milliseconds? Is it wait a second? Is it quick? Is it 50 milliseconds? It's sort of up to you. So we're gonna come here and we're gonna say const debounced data bounds is equal to use debounce. So I'm doing this on the home page just below where we set the bounds into uh, state. And use debounce wants to receive the data that you're trying to bounce, so data bounds, and how long it wants to wait. Um, it's gonna bounce requests for 200 milliseconds and then it's gonna return you the new result. So this value over here should only be changing maximum once every 200 milliseconds. So if we were to console.log debounced data bounds instead, here, let's clear out our console. So I'm zooming, done. So see how it, it repeated the exact same value 142 times and then it changed? So it's repeating, it's repeating, and now it changed. So you still do get some values changing, but it's nowhere near as much as it was before. So yes, React is re-rendering 142 times here, but the value changed the exact same until 200 milliseconds, and then it changed the value. So why would we want to do this? We're, we're doing this because we're going to use this debounced value in a GraphQL query to the backend to go and fetch the, the houses that are within this bounding box. And Apollo, it, it sort of does its own debouncing in a way, but it only performs a GraphQL query when the variable values have changed. So because we're using the debounced data bounds as the variable, it's not gonna change as often, which means um, Apollo will be performing less GraphQL queries. It's still gonna be a great user experience because they're only waiting a little bit of time and you could make this smaller if you want to, but it's just gonna avoid hundreds and hundreds of queries being sent to your backend, which would give you worse performance in the end if you crash your server. So let's remove this console.log. Uh, we don't need it now. We're gonna stop this video and then we're gonna move on to the next where we start to build the query on the backend to be able to actually query the homes and then display them. So that was it for this video. The files that were changed were two. We changed the home page to set the state here for, for data bounds. We passed the setter function to the map. The map received it and then it updated and called that to change the state values in two places, when the map loads and when the interaction changes. All right, that's it.